Glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening, my brethren. Good day, depending on where you are. Coming to you this evening again just to give this word of exhortation, even before we'll be resting today. Amen. We have been talking about what can put us and make us to remain in the Shekinah presence of God. That means the glory of God. Shekinah, like I said two days ago, means the presence of God. We are the, the glorious glamour, beauty of God comes from. It's, it, it's a dwelling place of God. It's a place of where his goodness is being manifested. And we say this is the light that, that comes out from God that enters into our life to make our lives to be the supernatural kind of life. It is the grace that comes from God into our life that makes his goodness to be more than enough that his holy name be glorified and magnified. Well, we are talking about some things that we have to know the promises of God for our lives. That God wants us to be an impact in this world. He wants us to show forth his glory in this world. He wants us to show forth his good works and his goodness in this world. Because he is God and God is good and God is love and God loves you. That is one thing you need to know. He didn't create you for destruction. He created you in his own image, in his own likeness because he wants you to be like him him, dwelling in the glory of his presence, dwelling in his Shekinah, that you will, be, you will be experiencing the power, the authority, the goodness that comes from him that will amaze you, that will make, that will make you wonder, that will make you to see how marvelous he is, just like the angels, they behold him. <laughs> And they keep saying, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and will always be. Amen. But my brothers and sisters, in this era that we have now, in this generation that we are now, in this year 2000 that we are, we are seeing that there are things that are different from the way it used to be. Yes, more people are in the church, in the churches, but less people are responding to the power of God. More people are in the churches, more people are going to church, more churches are available. But we are seeing the signs of the last days. We are Christians are becoming lovers of themselves. And yet we want to experience the power of hold. We want to see the things that used to happen in the days of the apostles. But nobody wants to give himself or herself into doing the things of God. Only a few people are dedicating themselves to God. I want to challenge you this evening. I want to challenge your relationship with God. I want to challenge how much of God do you count as worthy of praise? How much of God do you know that you can really bow down yourself unto him? God chose a man in the Old Testament. His name is called Abraham. God took this man and God started training him. God started talking to him. God gave him a promise. Her promise that will last for generation. We saw that Abraham was worshiping God. Abraham was worshiping God, was praising God in building of altars. He was covenanting himself. He covenanted himself with the promises of God, with the words of God, but not from the trueness of his heart. Do ask me how do I know that? It's clearly written in the Bible. It's like some of us going to church. We attend services. 
We go for prayer meetings. We do prayers. We do praises. We do worship. Still, our heart is not in what we are doing. And we wonder why are things not happening. God promised Abraham. In the book of Genesis 15, God repeated the, 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 the promise again. Abraham said, what are you talking about, God? You keep telling me this thing is going to happen. What are you talking about, God? Is it not my servant that is going to be the one that is going to, to be my heir, that we inherit everything I have? God answered him, no. He said, Lord, look at me in the book of, of Genesis 15. God appeared to him 15, 1, 2. He said, after these things, the, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. You see, Abraham was able to see vision. He connected to God to the extent that he could see vision. He could hear from God. Yet, God was still saying something is lacking in your life. If you can see vision, does not still mean that you are already perfect in God. I mean, we all know that Jesus Christ has come. He has paid a price for us. But yet, there is a level that God is longing to see his children to be. Abraham could hear the voice of God. That was why in Genesis chapter 12, he left. He heard the voice of God. He was already kind of having a relationship. And now God appeared to him in a vision. He knew it was God that was talking to him. Because of how he replied. God told him in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy seed and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me? Seeing I go shadless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. For said, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he that shall comfort out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And then he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven, and tell the, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall the seed be. The Bible said, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. This was what happened. He said, God, you have given me the promise. Abraham was able to see vision. Abraham was able to hear from God. Abraham was building altars. He was converting himself. He converted himself to, with the promises of God, with the instructions of God, yet the promise didn't come. Because Abraham was still going to church like some of us we do, some of you do, without experiencing the power of the grace of God. Without knowing really what grace means. Without knowing really what, what, what fellowshipping with God means. He's not clapping of hands. He's not jumping in the church. He's not singing songs. It is called true worship. He said, the Lord God is seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The gift of the spirit was already operating in the life of Abraham. Of Abraham. God even said, said to Abimelech, like he said, Abraham is a prophet. He will pray for you. And if we go to the New Testament, we know that somebody who is a prophet is the one that is able to see vision. And if we hear quickly the voice of God, yet the promise didn't come because God was training Abraham. And you can imagine after all this, 
that God asked him to look at the stars. God was teaching him how, to, how he could depend on God. God said, I am your shield, that is your protector. I am your protection, and I am your exceeding reward. I am the one that is able to bless you beyond your imagination. Abraham said, what kind of blessing do you want to give me when I don't have a child? I don't need those blessings. It was kind of like what he says, if I should paraphrase it. Amen. But let's go on. Now, after Abraham have heard this, though he was still Abraham dead, after Abraham heard this, what did he do? He still went in into Hagar to produce Ishmael. That is it. Lack of patience in the life of some of us. We will ask God for something. But God is to, wants to train you. God wants to lift you up. God wants to cut off every excess thing that is in your life. God wants to really take you for himself. He's so jealous about you that he's guiding you, protecting you, molding you to become that shining light. That is Shekinah, his glory on this earth. But lack of patience, lack of endurance, make us to fall at times. But thank God for the love of God that he has spoken even through his promise. He said the righteous will fall seven times and seven times the righteous will rise up. God can never leave you on the ground. God can never leave you on the ground. He loves you so much with a great passion. That passion that makes him to create you, form you in his own image and likeness, is that great love that he does not want you to perish. That great love was so much in him that he came as Jesus. God came as Jesus. God came as Jesus to share his own blood, to conquer sin and death, that you may have life and have it in abundance. Devil thought when he finished Jesus, that is all. <laughs> but instead of devil to be able to finish Jesus, Jesus said it is finished. I have already accomplished. He said it before he went to the grave. Before he, before he made a public show, a public disgrace, as written in the book of Ephesians. Before he made, or Colossians is that, before he made a public disgrace, of principalities and powers, he already declared on earth, it is finished. Then he went to fight the spiritual war. And he came out of the spiritual war and he said, All authority and power has been given unto me. Go. Amen. You are fasting, you are praying, we are waiting on the Lord, looking onto what is going to happen this weekend. Has anointed of God ministries, we are celebrating the 12th anniversary. How prepared are you to receive from God? How prepared are you? How conscious are you of the love of God for you? God loves you so much. How valuable have you taken the, the love that God has for you, the love of the Father, the love of that one that, that renews his mercy over your life every morning so that you cannot be destroyed? How much value do you place on the love that God is showering on you every day? He said we should be a living sacrifice unto him. Hallelujah. Abraham still made a mistake. He went in to his wife's servant, Hagar, and he produced Ishmael. Alternatives and shortcuts is not for a Christian. Alternatives and shortcuts is not for a Christian. When we stand strong with God, God will never make us fail. Even when we fail, He's faithful and just to take us up again. That is the greatness of His love that He has for us. Despite what Abraham did, Genesis 17, God overlooked what he has done. God called him again. Genesis 17, verse 1. 
He said, and when Abraham was 90 years old, 90 and nine years, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. I will multiply thee exceedingly. Look at God repeating the, the promise that he spoke to Abraham in Genesis 15. It's like Abraham needs to always hear it a second time. Because if you look at the book of Genesis chapter 12, it started with the word that and God had said to Abraham. God was not just saying it. He said it already. It was a reminder. Our God has said to Abraham. Abraham was lingering, just like Lot. It was a generational thing in them, just like Lot. Lingering to go out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels have to push him out. He would have died there. The angels have to carry him out. Hallelujah. God repeated to him again, say, walk before me. Stop trying to do things in your own way. Stop being carnal. Stop being fleshly. I am the God that will, that will reward you, multiply you exceedingly. Amen. And Abraham understood something that was so perfect. He understood what God was saying. He kind of understood the revelation. And then God asked him to circumcise. And he did circumcise himself. Because somehow, just at that point, he got the Rema word. All along, the promises of God to Abraham were like logos. They were logos. They were just words. The, the revelation has not hit his mind. He has not caught it in the spiritual realm. He tried to when he saw the stars. That was why the Bible said he believed and it was counted unto him as revelation. That time he was able to penetrate into the spiritual and he caught the revelation. It became righteousness for him. But then, the things around him, the carnal kind of mind, the fleshly mind overtook him again. So he committed sin. He went into Agar and produced Ishmael. But this time around, when God spoke, it was a Rema word. It became a revelational word. It became something that he held so dearly to himself. Even though he had Ishmael. Even though he had Ishmael, he said, no, if God is telling me that Ishmael is not, then I have to hold myself, to hold myself, to make sure I hold on to the promise of God. I cannot be a church goer without experiencing the true power of God any longer. Let me paraphrase it and bring it to our own time. I refuse to be just an ordinary church goer. I refuse to be a dependent on the pastor. It's not as if we are not necessary in your life. I told us that yesterday. That there is a point you will come in your life that probably you, is, 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 is a stage of hopelessness. And you need a pastor to speak the Rema word into your spirit. Just as God spoke into Abraham. You need a prophet to speak into your spirit. Has God called Ezekiel to speak to the dry bones of the house of Israel? I explained that already yesterday. So there is a place for the pastors. There is a place for the prophets, for the evangelists, for the apostles, for the teachers. The fivefold ministry, there is a place for them in the church. But you have to know how to catch that Rema word. Pray this prayer tonight as we are going to start the program tomorrow. Say, God, I don't want to be hearing logos any longer. I want my ears to always be open to your Rema words. When somebody have an idea, like the electrician, the one that made the electric, he tried and tried and tried and failed so many times. But he was so sure of his vision. He was so sure of the idea that he kept trying until he was successful. When you hear the Rema word, you cannot let it go. 
every other thing falls in place. Circumcision was not a problem for, for Abraham because he had the Rema word. The promise became revelational. So you have to pray, Father, let my ears, the, the spirit of my mind, as I hear you teaching me through my pastors, through my prophets, as I even listen to preachers on, 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 on television, Father, let your Rema words come unto me. When the Rema word, that reward that God is speaking to you, when it enters into your spirit, when you are able to catch it, you will see that doing the word of God in line with that word, with that which you have heard, becomes something easy because there is a conviction from the inside. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm speaking to you this evening that we should start hearing God and hearing God well. To be able to walk before him and be perfect, walking before him and be blameless. That means when we hear the word of God, we will receive the word of God as the word of God. We should stop. We should stop missing the word of God, comparing the word of God to the things of this world. Today I was listening to Dr. Paul Nature. The glory dome, they were giving testimonies. And a woman and her husband, they came to give testimony. That woman gave birth to a child without womb. Without womb. The womb was taken away by a Nigerian soldier. The womb was taken away. When they opened up her womb, to get the child out. He said that the nurses, they fled the ward because they couldn't understand what was happening. A woman without womb had a child. Rema word can create things. Rema word from God can change every situation. Rema word from God makes the dead to be alive again. Rema word from God. When you hear the Rema word from God, there is a transformation and a lifting up in your life. And I decree that you will know and you will understand the Rema word of God. In your mighty name, of Jesus. In your mighty name, of Jesus. You will be able to hear God. You will not be the lover of yourself. You will not be the one that will, be, will have an itchy ears. You will not be the one that have a form of godliness without responding to the power of it, as it's recorded in the book of Timothy, talking about the last days. You will not be the one that will be fashioning yourself after the system of the earth, after the dressing of the world, after the makeup of the world. No! You will single yourself out for God. You will single yourself out for God to count him valuable, to count him worthy of all your praises, of all your honor, of all your adoration. Your speech will be seasoned with the spirit of God. Your thinking will be seasoned with the spirit of God. In your mighty name of Jesus. And that is why God is telling us, even as the book of Ephesians said, he said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly that we think. Ephesians 3.20, he said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen the rema word is the release of power in you the revelation of truth let your ears be open to hear God 
Let your ears be open to hear God. And yet, seeing vision, hearing God, is not your character. This is a spiritual gift. But God said to Abraham, walk on your behavior. Walk on your character. Walk on how you respond to me. Walk on how you respond to me. Say, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be perfect. The Lord will cut off from you everything that is still entangling you. The Lord will trim them out of you. In your mighty name, O oh Jesus. May the Lord God prune you as God has pruned Abraham that made Abraham to be able to circumcise himself at the age of 99, ready to offer his son as a sacrifice to God. He came to that stage that he gave everything about himself. He handed it to God. May God bring you to that stage. In your mighty name, O oh Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord God uphold you. May the Lord God keep you. May the Lord God continually make his face to shine upon you. In your mighty name, O oh Jesus. Use this opportunity again before we pray to welcome you and to invite you. I'm welcoming you and at the same time inviting you to anointing of God ministries. We are starting our program tomorrow in the evening from 7 p.m. Till 9 p.m. I mean 6:30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, the same time. 6:30 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Sunday in the morning is the celebration time where we are going to celebrate the 12th year anniversary of this ministry. I hope you will come and I believe you will come. And also, if you want to participate, maybe you want to bless the church. If you go to the Anointing of God Ministries website, you will see the online payment. Probably you are outside Innsbruck, you are outside Tirol, you are outside Austria. You can use the online giving of Anointing of God Ministries to celebrate this 12th year anniversary with us and to bless the ministry. And as you're doing that, sowing seed into this ministry, God also will bless you in your mighty name, O oh Jesus. Now we are going to pray. And as I am praying also, you'll be speaking in tongues and praying also for yourselves. You are going to ask God to let your ears be open to receive his rema words, to receive his, to, to know his voice, to recognize his voice, and to know how to respond to his voice. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Sandelebo kwa sharaba kwa terebo sitia. Nemo kwanda laba kwande rebo sonto loba kaga ye kwa terebo sitia. Rabo sondo roba kanda laba ashe kwa terebo sondo roba kende riyahi. Remusu atala baka tara baka ye kwa terebo sondo loba yagade. Father God, in your mighty name, O oh Jesus, Lord, I put before you everyone that is listening to me today. Father God, I pray for them in your mighty name, O oh Jesus, by your power, Father, let the power of your very self touch them. Let your power 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 touch them. Let your anointing reach them. Let your power touch them. Where they are struggling in life, where they are struggling to hear your voice, where they are struggling, Father God, to be able to discern you. My Father, my God, I pray that you will touch their ears. You will touch their mind. Father, touch their ears. My God, touch their mind. And Enable their ears to be able to recognize your voice. Enable their mind to be able to catch your rhema words. To catch your revelational words. To know 
when you are speaking unto them in your mighty name of Jesus mapolo barebo kwa satala bagwa rebo kwa she kwa katele boko toro bakande rege sende legeteria rimasu ande lebo kukuria bakasia every voice of the devil every voice of the enemy that is shocking and is making your ears to be impaired that is disturbing your spiritual ears that is not making your spiritual ears to hear the voice of God I decree those satanic voices be silenced. Those satanic voices be silenced. Those satanic voices be silenced. Whatever we make you to go to the church and you will not be able to hear the word of God. Whatever we make you to go to the church and you will not be able to catch the revelational truth of the word of God. Whatever is making you to go to church and will not make you to get the rema, the solution for your problems. The solution for your problem. I decree against that power of darkness. I decree against that evil forces. They perish and die. They perish and die. They perish and die. They perish and die. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your spiritual ears be open. May your spiritual ears be open. May your f- I say, may your spiritual ears be open. May your spiritual eyesight be open. May your spiritual eyesight be open. May your mind be able to comprehend the truth of God. May your mind be able to receive the knowledge and the wisdom of God. May your mind be able to comprehend the wisdom of God. To understand the truth of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are you will arise and you will shine. You will arise. The lebo kwari apa kwa santo lo ba kwa nde rebo kusonto lo ba kwa yegede. Rumaswa dele keke teri apa kwa satele boko koto ri abaga. Any demon living with you, I decree they come out. Out in your mighty name of Jesus. Whatever demon that is sharing your home with you. You will open your mouth and decree that whatever demon is sharing my home with me, I cast you out in your mighty name of Jesus. I cast you out in your mighty name of Jesus. Any demon sharing my home with me, sharing my home with me, Sharing my home with me, making me to be weak, not to respond to the spiritual call of God. I cast you out in your mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer for yourself. I say, pray for you, your mighty name of Jesus. My parable, soto lagadia. Every beast, satanic beast, satanic beast, satanic beast, sharing your life with you, sharing your destiny with you. I decree the fire of God come against them in your mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God come against them in your mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God come against them in your mighty name of Jesus. I decree the peace of God into your life. Your ears will hear God. Your eyes will see God. Your mind will understand God. Your light will be so much shining that darkness will not be able to comprehend it. In your mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed with the blessings of God. You are blessed with the goodness of God. You are blessed with the power of God. You are blessed with the authority of God. In your mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Jehovah God. We bless your holy name this evening, Father, for hearing us, God, and for delivering us, and for releasing your blessings unto our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I will ask you all, by the power of God, please share this audio. Let other people be blessed. Let other people be blessed. Share this audio. Let other people be blessed. Let people know that you have gained something and let them also gain and participate to gain what you have gained. Like I said, if you are not able to attend the program, but you want to sow seed, you want to participate with your resource, with your finance, and also with your prayers, we need you to be praying along with us for the power of God to flow during this period, for people to be delivered, for people to be set free. We also need you to sow seed of prayers into this ministry this weekend, that as we are doing this conference, that God will move mightily, that souls will be saved. We need you to also pray along with us. 
and also you can sow your seed. Go to the website Anointing of God Ministries. You can use that uh, a website to sow your seed through online. God will bless you. Looking forward to seeing all of you that you'll be able to come tomorrow, 6.30 to 9 p.m. We're looking forward to see every one of you. God bless you. Good night. May the Lord God be with you. His face shine upon you. May God give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.